What's up guys, it's Alex Bromley and I'm here at Elite FTS and we are going to go over the log press. Now there's a lot of reasons that you might want to log press. Uh, if you're getting ready for a strongman competition, you need to know how to log press because it's crushing. If you don't have the technique down, it is very technical. So you guys that are like 600 pound benchers, if you think you're gonna go into a local meet and have a good time, you might get walloped by a middleweight that knows how to split jerk and can finesse their way around big weights. The other reason is log pressing is a good developmental movement. A lot of strongman implements are not. This one is, so this can actually help build your upper body. It can help develop your press. It's very diverse. So we're gonna cover the ins and outs of the technique. A little bit of this is gonna be uh, competitively oriented. So the finer points of setting up for a big press in a contest. Some of the developmental stuff's a little bit easier strict pressing with a log, not overly technical, but on the other hand, competitively split jerking or push jerking with a log, that's beyond the scope of this video. There's other videos to do that and you probably shouldn't worry about that until you're a little bit more developed. So we're gonna go with a push press. A push press is easily accessible, that's what I do. I actually had to move away from a jerk and move to a push jerk to be more competitive. And it, it took a couple years, but it paid off big time. More accessible, it's more stable. So when you're in gravel or when you're on a, a steep driveway, a slope, it's much easier to pull off a, a push press um, just because you're not moving all over the place. Uh, and it tends to be more efficient. So we're gonna go over that. It's also a really good develop, uh, developmental exercise. Uh, push jerking, or sorry, push pressing. Push pressing, using your legs first and then going into the press can do wonders to expose your upper body to overload, to build your shoulders, your tricep strength. So log work, I think of it like a board press for your bench press. You know, the bar is elevated up. It's really easy to get your feet stable and then give a little push with your knees and then follow through. So we're gonna go over that. As far as gear goes, if you're new to this, I do not recommend learning with gear. Uh, there is a technique to using a belt to help the clean, which helps when you're competitive. But I think it's best to learn how to do it without a belt because you're gonna wanna get comfortable setting it on your diaphragm, very top of your abdomen, that's key. As far as footwear goes, people overthink the hell out of that. Go with whatever is comfortable. I do Olympic lifters when I'm indoors, um, when I'm, I'm stable. But if I'm in tall ceilings like this place or a convention center, or God help me if I'm outside just staring up at blue sky, you'll see guys just rock back and forth. I think Olympic lifters make it worse. So use whatever's comfortable. I like flatter feet because I can feel the ground a little bit better. And I actually do most of my pressing in New Balances. I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for that, but you get good at how you train, go with what's comfortable. So we're gonna learn, I'm in jeans, New Balances, shirt, uh, sweater. You know, you don't need a bunch of stuff to, to go through this. So the first thing we're gonna go through is the clean. Most important part, because if the clean is inefficient, it does not matter how strong you are. If the clean is inefficient, you waste a bunch of energy getting way back, getting into position, you're gonna be gassed, it's gonna feel like a million pounds, you're not gonna be able to breathe under the log, you're gonna miss the press. Especially in strongman, they do like clean and press every reps where it's like, it's like competitive jumping jacks. It's clean, press, down to the ground, repeat, you do a dozen reps in a minute and it sucks. And every rep you do that is inefficient just absolutely wipes you out. So to know how the clean's gonna go off, we have to know where we're going. We're going into a rack position. The most important part that I like to teach people is to get the, uh, to get the log off your arms. So think of an Olympic lifter, how they have their elbows super high, so all the weight's on the collarbone. You wanna get that sucker so it is on your shoulders. If that log is dumped, if the handles are horizontal, that means all the weight's in your elbows, it's out in front of you, this sucks, it's not a good time. So handles vertical is usually what I cue. Roll the log up, rotate it so the elbows are up, handles are pointing up and down. You should feel the weight out of your hands and that's conducive to a very efficient push press. So to do that, we need to position the log in a way that it can roll up that way. Now we're working with a 10 inch log. I believe this is a 10. For the men, it's usually 12, even 13 inches. In fact, they've made some real wood logs that get over that. The bigger it is, the less it's gonna rotate. So keep that in mind. You might have to experiment with whatever log you have, but I like to set this one with the handles down a little bit because it's going to roll a lot. It's going to, to rotate a lot on the way up. So I wanna end up with those vertical handles. So to set up, you're gonna set up just like you would a deadlift. Uh, it's lighter, so you're gonna to wanna to not think about it. You're gonna be intuitively wanting to just bend over and stiff leg it. I recommend setting up in kind of an efficient deadlift manner. I like to set the handles down a little bit because that's usually the angle that I grab when it's in my lap. So I rotate it, sets the handles down, gets my hands a little closer to my shins. And from right here, back is straight. And it's just a simple deadlift. Um, 
standing up, I'll, I get real crazy. I drag it up my shins just to kind of keep keeping the weight back because it is so much out in front of you. Uh, but that just makes it feel a little lighter. So I cue standing all the way up. You'll see some people just kind of pull it into their lap. That wastes a ton of energy. There's no reason to execute a bent row going into a log press. Hands down, thumbs down, stand all the way up. From here, sit all the way down, maintaining that position of the handles. Right here, my goal is to pull it in onto my diaphragm. So this is where that, that strongman power belly comes in because that thing is gonna create a shelf that's going to allow you to support this thing. So the first thing you wanna practice, making sure that you can get extension. It's almost like kind of a messed up uh, zercher squat. You wanna make sure you can get extension with this thing sitting on your diaphragm. So if you can get up while keeping it in position, once you're in a quarter squat, you snap the hips and it rolls right up. So to go over that one more time, deadlift, stand all the way up, sit back down, get it stuck right here, halfway up. Once knees, hips still bent, roll the hips forward. That's where you're snapping the hips, rolling it, standing up, catching it in that position. Now I'm out of breath because I'm out of shape. So once it's here, everything else is very easy. The push press, it's gonna be easier if you have experience with it on a barbell, but the idea is to cheat your overhead press, get momentum, knees, hips traveling up through the bar. So if the weight's on my shoulders, little bend at the knees. Don't make the mistake of doing this really deep front squat. Little bend at the knees, keeping balance, making sure that that thing is over your hips, that it's stacked, little dip, and you want to pop as quick as you can. In fact, the quicker you rebound with that push press, the more kinetic energy you're gonna build up, the more you're going to exploit stretch reflex to get just a huge press. And that's how you really take advantage of this. So if you can get just a ton of momentum right here from that little snap, you're gonna get so much momentum. It's just a matter of snapping out the elbows. You guys that do your board presses, you guys with the meaty triceps, the strong lockouts, you're going to be able to exploit this to where the guys that are good can push press 100 pounds more than they can strict press. So that's the potential there. That's how you get guys like Klokov that did like something like a 500 pound push press out of a rack at like 235. That's how you get this really freakish performance is by exploiting uh, all those opportunities to utilize the biggest muscles in your body to generate momentum and then to follow through. And the benefit is no matter where I am, I'm right here, I'm stable. I'm stable, I don't have to, I'm not kicking my feet out trying to get under it. I'm not, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time before that happened. Bottom line is I'm not letting that happen. I'm not uh, engaging in a more chaotic setup. I'm stable, so it's efficient. It's easy to cycle through, easy to get your reps. Uh, huge fan of the push press for that reason. So to demonstrate the full thing, approach the log, point the handles where I want them, all the way up, sit down, logs on top of my diaphragm, come up slowly, halfway up, pop here, I'm centered, through the heels, little dip, jump and press through. Make sure it's locked out, make sure the head's forward, bring it back down under control, roll it to your lap under control, and you can set up for your next rep. And I actually like to practice that too, because if you ever do a clean and pressing contest, controlling, it, it depends on what the weight is, but sometimes controlling it down and doing a touch and go deadlift faster, more efficient than just dropping it, which some guys do. Really depends how heavy it is. But if you practice those points and you get more comfortable uh, popping through, make sure you get that heel extension. That's another big point I left out. A lot of guys will just press off their heels. Get the heels off the ground. Any jumping or sprinting coach is gonna tell you how important that ankle motion, that last little flick through your foot is for generating power. So you wanna try to jump as high as you can off two inches of dip, off two inches of motion. And that's how you get really, really big presses. So that's my quick 10 minute tutorial on how to log press. Hopefully you guys can take this, implement it in your training. It's fun if you've never done it. So this is good variety on an event day, an accessory day, a GPP day. Your shoulders will benefit from this. Your pressing power will, gener uh, will benefit from this and you'll be able to work a uh, type of conditioning capability, functionality that you haven't been, uh, been able to do before. So it's a really good implement for that reason. So uh, thanks so much for watching guys. This is Alex Bromley at Elite FTS. I'll see you.